All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway. We are now joined by Casey Kane, driver of the number 95 Thorn Wellness Chevrolet this weekend here at Bristol. And um, a little bit of news this week with Casey. Um, so we're just going to open it up for media um, questions. So if you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. Who would like to kick us off? All right. We'll start with Jeff and then go to Bob. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. I guess, how long had this really been going on in your head and had you been thinking about this? Um, obviously, you didn't even tell Larson and people like that, I guess, at uh, last week. So um, how hard was it to keep it to yourself as well? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it's been on my mind for, for a while. I, had, I mean, truthfully, last, uh, you know, two years at Hendrick and then the year here at LFR, just like as far as competition, I haven't been as competitive as what I want to be. And um, so I would say, you know, over the last three, four months, it started, you know, on my mind, like, man, do I need to f find other things to do and, and think of other things to do? And um, I just finally made that decision, you know, but it's definitely been there for a few months, I would say this year. And LFR is working very hard to to uh, you know, make improvements, even get better from where we're at right now, and that's that was exciting to me. So it, you know, kept me in it a little bit longer. But then I finally just decided, this, you know, that it's it's time to to do something different. And you know, I, I I love NASCAR. It's been to me, it's been such a big part of my life, and I've enjoyed every every bit of it. And will keep watching and keep coming to the races when I can and things like that. And supporting it, supporting dirt car racing, um, supporting all the racing. I mean, I was thinking last night of how many different types of cars I raced over the last 25 years, and it's uh, it's been crazy to think of the all of the cars and the success that I've been able to have in so many different cars and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's just something that I always truly have enjoyed and um, but need to just back off a little bit and not do it quite as much as what I have because – because the, uh, you know, it's just the time that I'm, I'm missing a bit with him. I actually get so much time with Tanner, and that's one thing I, I saw people say, like, you just, you know, you'll get more now, and, and I will, but I get a ton of time with Tanner, but it's just going to be different time now. You know, it's not always going to be on the weekdays. Now it can be weekends. We can go to a football game. We can go to a baseball game, just do things and not be completely thinking about racing while I'm with him or while I'm at a dinner or so many different things that go on throughout a week um, or a year, my mind is always in racing. And it's all I've thought about for 25 years. It's all I've wanted to do and figure out how to get better as a driver, as a team, um, understanding the cars, all those things. You know, how can I get better? And um, it's all that's been on my mind. So to just back off of that a little bit, I think would be really refreshing and, and be really good for me and my family, friends, things like that. All right, Bob. Bob Parker, CSPN. Um, from everything we know, Levi Bob Levine was talking to you, and it sounded like you had offers. How do you walk away from money on the table? Yeah, I mean, that was one part of it was, you know, the money side. And I, uh, you know, I had some neat opportunities with Levine. We are you know, working together for the season, and um, I, it, it was going to keep getting better. Uh, there was money there. There was uh, a few other offers that I had received over the last month and just options that we could talk about, things like that. And it was it felt really good to have that. But at the same time, it wasn't necessarily about that anymore. And, and I didn't feel that I could seriously race all of next year and be completely committed 100%. And I feel like there are guys out there that can be and that should have those opportunities over me at this point in time because I don't, I don't feel like I can be that guy, um, you know, from this point on. All right, Mark. Uh, Mark Garrow, PRN. Uh, I guess that'd be over to your right. There you <laughs> when you take a look at some of the other guys that have walked away in recent years, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, you know, you see all the, I guess, the difference in their life, a little more fullness to it. Um, 
Is that kind of one of the things you looked at in the, this thought process about how, how it could be uh, ideally for you and your son and, and you and your life moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I definitely looked at that and, and thought about that, and I see, um, you know, good things out of those out of those people and what they're doing and the happiness in their lives. So that was something that crossed my mind. But at the same time, it was more about kind of where I was, and I have some ideas on business. I have some. I still love my sprint cars and want to be close to that and keep keep that going. You know, we want to grow that and and keep it as as strong as it can be because I've been part of short track racing basically since I left it uh, to come to NASCAR. So I want to stay part of that. And, um, yeah, I just I think that there's some really good opportunities out there that I can do and still be close to racing, but just not, just not into it, you know, totally 100% all the time like I have been in the last 25 years. All right, we're going to come back and go Nate, Jim, and Caleb. Uh, Nate Ryan at BC Sports. Casey, you were in, as we understand it, an interesting situation in that I think you had one more year left after leaving Hendrick, like, on that deal. So could you have essentially just walked away after last year and been under contract this year? I mean, did you use this year as sort of like a way to just evaluate if this is what you want to keep doing, knowing that you were still going to be under contract for one more year? Yeah, I mean, I thought, um, you know, this year with a new team, kind of a new outlook, a uh, small team, you know, I was uh, that opportunity that, that Bob Levine gave me. Um, that was exciting to me going into the season. At the end of last year, I was, uh, it was actually kind of like mid, mid August when we first started talking and it was going to be fresh, new, you know, something different. It was exciting to me. So I wanted to give it, you know, one more shot with a different group and a different company. And, um, I did that and we've had some success this year. We've also had races where, you know, we all wanted them to be better. And then we've had some races that weren't good at all. And, um, but the successful days, you know, make me happy on Monday and excited to come back for that next that next race. And um, but I just kind of ran out of, you know, that anymore. Like I just I'm just happy to finish these final 12 the best that we can and enjoy it with the guys and uh, try to get some good results and then you know do something a little different after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jim. JimOuterMotorsport.com. Uh, do you find it curious or do you have a why it's so difficult for fans and even some media in motorsports to understand why drivers want to walk away when they do? You know, there was there's still people who probably think Carl Edwards is going to show back up uh, anytime now. And uh, people were throwing out reasons, like, you know, quote, real reasons why you probably may have been leaving. Why is it so difficult, you think, for people to understand that what you say is a legitimate reason? Or as Bob mentioned, you know, leaving money on the table. Why is that so hard for people to believe? Yeah, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but it was, it was, uh, last night I started looking at social media and I hadn't looked at it a bunch throughout the day. So it was really interesting and felt really good to read a lot of that and see kind of the impact um, that I've brought to, to racing in a way. And I, I think so much about it as basically, you know, the person that I am and who I am and how I was raised. And I go back to kind of the same reasons why I'm, I've kind of had enough at this point. And that's, um, you know, when I was young, my dad was all about if you do something, you do it 100%. And um, you just you know, you put everything you have into it. And when my parents finally said yes for me to go racing at 14, I was like, it was a hundred percent from that point on. And it's all that I've kind of like I was saying, it's all that I've thought about. It's all that I really think about when we're having fun, when we're whatever it may be, I'm still there. I'm still thinking about racing. And I think it just gets to be a lot, you know, 25 years later, it's just a lot. And it'll be nice to not have that on my mind full time. You know, so that's kind of my biggest reason is just to think more about him, think about other things in life and things that I want to do, achieve, and uh, just not be so deep in, into racing for a little bit, you know, and I think that'll be really nice for me. I also had, you know, the, the side from texts and emails, phone calls, uh, mentions, things like that on social, and it's, you know, 
kind of the person that I've been and the way I've treated people. And to me, that's all about my mom and the respect side. And she just, she was always about like treat people the way you want to be treated and respect people um, and they'll respect you back. And so I've, I've been like that, whether it was fans, whether it was sponsors, uh, owners, mechanics, like whoever I've been associated with, with in racing. And um, I see a lot of that last night. So that makes me feel pretty good um, to know that and just to know how much I put into racing and how much I love racing. All right, Caleb and then Woody. Kayla Whistler kicking the tires out. When the checkered flag falls at Homestead and you look back on your career, is there any regrets that you kind of are going to remember? Or and if you look five to ten years down the road, will this time in NASCAR be, sat be considered a satisfying part of your life? Yeah, absolutely be satisfying. I've, um, to me, I've won 20 cup races. It says 18, but that all-star race was just as hard as the others. <laughs> the 150 had to beat Tony. That was just as hard as the others. Um, so, yeah, I feel like it's, hey, I would love to win a championship, love to have 30 race wins, uh, you know, but, but that didn't happen, and I'm fine with that. And I, I feel like the things that did have, have been great. I got to basically make a run and, you know, live in an awesome time in NASCAR from 04 till now. And, I mean, it feels great to be 